welcome to the shop. I'm doing something different today. I am going to try to do this like full on the whole thing, like in one shot. So I don't know how this is going to go, but this is what I'm going to try. So um, this has been a really, really exciting week um, because I put in our, our Arduino and that is um, a way to control all the lighting very specifically. Now, uh, the reason I went to this is I've always wanted to have the ability to control the light. I wanted, you know, to have like this do a flicker or something like that. The very first diorama I ever did, that's what I wanted. But in this instance, I said, you know, this burn barrel, and that's what drove this thing, really needs to flicker. So I was talking to my cousin last week, and he said, you know, I know how to program that. We should look at it together. Because um, I had bought this little Arduino guy um, like a year ago. So here's another one as an example. So this is just the Arduino. And so what this does is it allows me to go ahead and upload little programs to it. And those little programs will output to specific pins. And then those little programs will control the lights to turn them on or off. Uh, in this instance, it's flickering. And I can even have them pulse. I can have them do a routine or whatever. So it's just really cool. And the other thing that's really cool is it's so easy to learn. Uh, I'm not a program. I did a little bit of light stuff at my last job. But this is something that I could really wrap my hands around. To such a degree that I think I'm going to do... Um, an Arduino for every single diorama I, I do in the future. I mean, it's it, it's that number one simple. Also, it's fairly uh, affordable. This little guy right here, um, pretty powerful, was twelve ninety five. Um, now it seemed like everything was twelve ninety five, so it kind of stacks up. Um, I needed a little power supply for it for an alternate method. That was twelve ninety five. Um, the wall plug to get the DC voltage to this whole thing, because it's all DC, that was $12.95. So yeah, it did kind of escalate real quickly, but for what it does and for, you know, what I put into this and what, you know, maybe you put into your stuff, um, I think it's totally worth it. And it's really fun. It's It adds another element and um, kind of a, a, a neat, um, kind of an upgrade, I guess for your diorama. So um, the neat thing also, it runs off of a nine volt battery or I can plug it into the wall. I kind of said that. So I'm just gonna plug this in real quick and explain what we got going on. Now I'm using two cameras. And so I got a camera over here and uh, I got this camera. And so that tight camera, I'm hoping to get some tighter stuff. So it just turned on. So it had to kind of do this initialization thing because it hasn't had any power. But once the power came on, this light turned on and that I've just got set steady but at a lower um, like output. I can, I can vary um, how strong it is. Um, the Panzer has two lights in it and they're all the way down here in the nose so you don't see them. There's no like bright area but they do illuminate throughout the cabin uh, or the interior and so if you come up on it even with the lights on um, you know, you can see inside there, which is kind of cool. That's what I was hoping for. Um, and then this, again, this is what drove this whole thing this week, is it's flickering. I, I did kind of a little carved acrylic piece to make it look like fire and, and put some sticks around it. And I'll show in the video um, later on. But this um, then has two lights in it. And because of a routine that we have here, it'll actually flicker. And I don't know how well it's picking up picking up the flickering now, but if you can see that, it flickers really nicely. Um, and there's a specific routine that Arduino has on their website um, to be able to do that. You know, and that was what was really fun about this is figuring out that there is um, number one, a simple way to do what I always wanted to do um, cost effective uh, way to do it. And there's a lot of help files so that you don't have to be a programmer. You can just go there, um, download the stuff and figure it out. So anyway, I'm starting to ramble. Uh, 
Might have to cut that. Anyway, this is also the stuff that I've built for the diorama already. And nothing's finished yet, needs weathering and stuff, but I thought this would be fun to do the story. I want to show you what, you know, the story is that I'm building. And the lighting has kind of key elements to that. So I'm going to put that there so I can turn this. And I'm just going to start adding the, the figures. So the first thing I've got is we've got some German soldiers. And these two German soldiers, they're just guarding this bridge. And so they've got uh, a little guard shack, and, and that's going to go right here. And then they've got a gate, and that's going to go here. And I kind of cut the corner off that because I want it to go right up against this area that's cut already. That's just my battery. Um, here, it'll be painted black later on. But I needed that kind of as far away as possible um, to have enough room for all the stuff that I wanted on the bridge. So that's going to go there. Um, and, and that's kind of the basic setup. Now, this is a... The story that I'm, I'm putting behind it is this is like an access bridge for maybe it's a little bit unused, but it's still it's still kind of important. Um, maybe it is the kind of the staff entrance to a headquarters that the Germans have, you know, occupied in the city of Narvik. Um, and so this is one that's sort of lightly defended, but it's a great target because if it's out, that's a key um, advantage for the Allied troops that are going to come in and um, on this date that I'm depicting, May 28th, 1940, um, have a victory over the Germans. So the whole story revolves around this bridge being taken out and this position being taken out. So to do that, I've got these guys positioned here, and I'll tell you exactly what they do in a minute. And then this guy is positioned back here. And to accomplish it, we've got some Polish soldiers that my friend Rick Taylor gave to me. I, I didn't have any Polish soldiers, and I, and I looked around, but he had an artillery kit that had some extras, and he didn't use the figures. So, ta-da! Thank you again, Rick. Um, these guys are going to be down here, and they represent the Polish Pod Hill Brigade that was reformed in France in 1939 after Poland uh, was invaded uh, and taken by uh, the Germans. Um, boy, don't check me on that. But that's, I've been reading about it, and that's, that's what I understand. So these guys are with the, um, the Norwegian Army, the British Army, and the French Army, Allied troops, uh, and they're the ones that actually are attacking and, and, and conducting the battle here in Narvik uh, against the Germans. And so I thought they would be great as sappers. So these guys have come in. It's very early in the morning, and they're setting charges under the bridge. And I've got a whole bunch of little, like, bombs and stuff like that. And, like, what looks like TNT. I'm hoping I can get that on the camera properly. Um... I think it's a little cartoonish, honestly, when I first did it. Uh, and, and like I think I've thought before this, the barrel with the uh, TNT on top, that's like straight up pirate. But I wanted it to be immediately recognizable by any age group. And, and I think this honestly does that. M maybe not young, young kids today. But I remember growing up, cartoons, whatever, you know, we would see TNT, boom, you know what it is. So... I'll probably do something more appropriate like satchel charges, but for now I still think I'm going to use parts of that. So I got a bunch of that, and that's going to go in there, and that's stuff that I built uh, previously. Um, and so I've got five figures. I'm not sure what everybody's going to do, but I've got two guys that are kind of kneeling. They can be setting charges. I got two guys that are kind of standing. They can be unloading ammunition and uh, or munitions. And here is where that's coming from. So I've got a little cart that uh, I've got here, and it, this is a little bit of a, I mean, suspended anime, uh, suspended uh, belief, but what I'm trying to do here is show the cart 
partially under the bridge. Now, I've got horses. I don't know that I'm going to have those horses there, but I'm just trying to show the, the cart with a thrown wheel. And it's partially under the bridge for a very specific reason. I'm going to have an older lady. Uh, she's very distraught in her pose. She is going to be standing down here um, looking distraught. Um, I've got another lady, a younger lady, and she actually had a cigarette in her hand. Uh, it broke off. It's just very brittle uh, plastic. But uh, I'm going to put a cigarette back in her hand, and she is going to be up here, and I'll tell you why in, in just a minute. So I've got a lady there, I've got a lady here, and this cart, what I'm going to have is um, some of these crates in the back underneath the bridge that nobody can see, the guys from up here can't see, and there'll be a tarp over it, and the guys are unloading crates of munitions to, to do the bridge. Um, but on the forward side, under here, like this part, it'll also have, you know, the other end of that tarp, but it'll be back, and she'll have, like, some fruit or some apples or, you know, bushels or thrush. I don't know, maybe she's very poor. But anyway, she's trying to take something to market, and it's just going to be kind of like, oh, no, you know, my, my cart broke down. Well, it's all a ruse. And, and in this entire ruse, that's, that's part of the ruse, is, is she's trying to be a distraction for one of the guards up here, there's only two, to try to keep them from looking underneath the bridge or hearing or whatever's going on. So she's down here and she's drawing the attention of him and so that's what the searchlight's going to be doing, is, is going to be looking down here. Now for the other end of the, the ruse, we've got this. Now this is a, a younger lady that um, is also in on it, so she's like part of the resistance. And she's sitting here talking to this guy. Initially, she was talking to both of them around their burn barrel. Um, and this guy right here, I've, I've carved his hand. Um, and I don't know if it's in here or it's in a different place. But um, I've carved his hand to hold a cognac bottle. Uh, he was holding a, like, I don't know, uh, or oh, a sign. He was holding up a, like a, a halt sign or something like that. Um, but I've got him a, a cognac bottle that will fit in his hand and will hold it right now. It looks really cool. And then he'll have a cigarette in that hand. So he's telling stories. So she has got these guys maybe a little bit tipsy uh, with the cognac. She brought the cognac. She's not. She's totally aware of her surroundings and situation. And she's playing these guys. So he's trying to impress her by telling a big story. So he's got a cigarette in that hand, a cognac in that hand. Um, this guy's over here. Uh, he's taken, you know, an interest in this old lady. Uh, and she's just playing it up like, oh dear, oh dear, what do I do? And all the while, our Polish Pod Hill troops are setting charges underneath the bridge. So that's pretty much it. I mean, that's the, that's the diorama. Um, and that's the story behind it. And, 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 and that is something that I want to kind of get through because when I do this stuff, I don't really have the story initially before I start. Um, but as I build these individual elements and I kind of see where it's going, then the story starts to emerge. And it's really important for me to have a story for these things because that's the whole thing. I want a cohesive story from start to finish. I, I don't want just a scene of people doing something. Like in a historical scene, it's like a snapshot. So nobody's really doing anything other than their individual job. And, and maybe you can, you can't figure out what's going on, but it's in a historical setting, and so you say, oh, okay, so that's the Battle of the Bulge, or whatever. But in this, I'm trying, and all my dioramas, I'm trying to show an absolute story with everything in it, and everything goes to tell that story. Um, even the terrain and, and, and stuff like that. So, anyway, um, that's it. I, I just, I kind of was, was real excited about this. I've got a, a video coming up where I'm going to show all about the Arduino, how to program it. Um, I'll show um, how I put everything into the individual pieces because I didn't, you know, this diorama was fully built before um, I started in on it again. I built this in 2018 with my nephew. Well, when I kind of relaunched into it, I had all these ideas. I had to cut this out of here. I've routed the wires to these so you don't see wires, uh, so it all goes through here. 
Um, but there's some really neat distinct advantages to the way that I build my dioramas using the foam that allows for that. Uh, if I were using plaster, it'd be a heck of a lot more difficult. So anyway, I hope uh, you have enjoyed this video. This is a very new format for me. I've never done this kind of format. Um, I don't know if I'll ever do it again. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if it uh, is something that you like. But uh, if you do, please tell me. If you don't, um, well, you should tell me anyway. I mean, you know. But um, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy the video.